and fall has given us a taste of pleasant conditions, but will we reserve the full serving? I'll have more coming up. And Obama blames Washington for the economic crisis on Wall Street, but Mitt Romney fires back. Gas prices may be hitting your pocketbook, but General Motors may have a solution for you. This is your Wednesday edition of News Channel 12, live at 6. Live from the campus of Western Kentucky University, where the spirit makes the magic. This is News Channel 12, live at 6. Good evening, I'm Hank First. And I'm Rachel Collier. Thanks for joining us. Today marks the 221st anniversary of the signing of our nation's constitution. Kentucky Chief Justice John Minton Jr. spoke with high school and college students this afternoon in the Mass Media and Technology Hall. Minton focused his discussion on his vision for the Kentucky Court of Justice. Over the next four years, he plans to increase community involvement and renew public interest in the judicial system. Chief Justice Minton is also reinstating the Judicial Council. When asked his advice on how to be successful in school, Minton recommended students focus on reading and writing skills. Whether it's a classmate, family member, friend, or a friend of a friend, mostly everyone has somehow been touched by suicide. Organizations like the Kentucky Group for Suicide Prevention are campaigning to make suicide prevention a priority. That's it, we're breaking up. What? Scenes like this one from Heather's often cast suicide as a light matter but it hits close to home on WKU's campus with the suicide in Keene Hall last spring and the suicide of basketball player Nathan Eisert in 2002. According to his stepfather, Stephen Ulrich, Eisert was a walk-on who later received a scholarship, but a foot injury ended that dream. In June of 2002, he took his own life. No one picked up on any warning signs. Uh, having difficulty falling asleep, uh, having difficulty staying asleep and then having a lot of problems waking up and getting out of bed. Changes in appetite. Dr. Uh, Carl Lavis, assistant director at WKU's and Counseling and Testing that Center, adds that withdrawal that. and isolation withdrawal are also isolation signs of depression. So. In an article in MSN Health and Fitness, it says depression is a problem with college students because of developmental changes. It goes on to say that living on their own for the first time and experiencing real-world stress is another factor. Depression sets in with this age group, and especially in young women. Particularly for young women, um, that first semester away from home, statistically, uh, we, we, we see more depression. Young women tend to feel a lot of ambivalence about leaving home and being out on their own. Causes of depression include relationship problems, work, and financial problems. According to other doctors, suicidal individuals give off warning signs 90% of the time before they attempt suicide. If people are just not afraid to say something, to speak up, uh, if they are suicidal or if they know someone that's suicidal, that's a, that's a lot of death that we could prevent. If you or someone you know is struggling with depression, contact a local support group. Kentucky residents aren't the only ones feeling a pinch in their pocket because of gas prices. Police officers have been urged to drive around on patrol less because of increasing gas prices. Instead, they are conserving gas by using checkpoints. Between July and September, state police have conducted 1,100 safety road checks across the state. The road checks have resulted in over 300 DUI arrests and over 400 seatbelt violations. There were also several stolen vehicles recovered during the stops. Police said Tuesday they saved almost 4,000 gallons of gas statewide at about $14,000. Kentucky gas prices can't get much higher. Governor Steve Beshear signed an executive order on September 12th to prevent price gouging on gas and other petroleum products in Kentucky. According to the order, prices can't grossly exceed prices of those products at the time when the order was signed. The Attorney General will prosecute anyone in violation of the order. The New York Times reported that because of the hurricanes, about 15 percent of the U.S.'s oil output was halted. Barack Obama is out with a new television ad about the troubled economy. In the ad, Obama talks about the struggles many American families are facing and how he plans to tackle the problem if he's elected president in November. The two-minute campaign commercial will begin airing across the country tonight. 
border, Mitt Romney won't be watching that ad. He slammed Barack Obama's plan to get money pumping into the economy. Taxes. The worst thing you can do with an economy in trouble is raise taxes. And I really would call on Barack Obama to say, you know what, it's not the time to raise taxes. It is instead a time to smooth the market out, to try and rekindle the growth of our, of our economy, lower taxes, and get ourselves from sending $700 billion a year to foreign countries for oil. Let's keep that money here. Let's drill in America. It's something Barack Obama opposes. He's wrong on that one. Romney talked up his own business experience during his, his presidential bid. High gas prices and a spiraling credit market is resulting in job cuts at the GM plant here in Bowling Green. General Motors is slowing production and laying off about 70 employees. The plant will shut down for a week starting October 6th to move equipment and train employees to slow assembly from 18 to 15 vehicles an hour. Layoffs will begin around October 13th and will affect hourly paid employees. According to Motor Trend, Corvette sales have dropped 8.5% since the beginning of the year. And while sales for the Corvette have dropped, General Motors is investing in a car that could solve your gas price blues, the new electric car, the Chevy Volt. Ron Maloney has an inside look. GM's driven pretty far out on a limb with his four-cylinder, five-door, front-wheel drive, extended-range, battery-driven vehicle. Basically, what they've come up with is a battery-powered car with a backup generator, removing the worry about whether you'll wind up on the roadside with a dead battery. GM Vice Chairman Bob Lutz says this possible game-changer hits the sweet spot. It's way, way, way more fuel-efficient than a conventional hybrid, way more fuel-efficient than a plug-in hybrid, uh, obviously incomparably more efficient than a piston engine. One of the problems customers might have is the different new look. It's a far cry from the sporty concept of 2007 we saw at the auto show. And this design is now two years away from hitting the showrooms, leaving us all to wonder whether this is the real game changer it's proclaimed as. Still, right now, no other car company offers this technology, this road ready, and Honda's even said it can't build it. Edmunds.com auto analyst Michelle Krebs says this vehicle could change how the world views the 100-year-old number one car maker. Uh, GM has this stodgy image of being fat, dumb, and happy kind of thing, and vehicles that are gas guzzlers, this could really reverse their image if, if it delivers. Many Americans today don't consider GM as they don't consider us a leader in technology and in, and in energy-saving technologies. I think with one fell swoop, the advent of the Volt will erase that. The Volt is due in showrooms by late 2010. GM hasn't announced pricing, but it's expected to cost between thirty dollars and $40,000. Many Louisville residents are no longer living by candlelight. Louisville Gas and Electric spokesman Chip Keeling says 142,000 homes and businesses had power restored by 7 this morning. About 100,000 homes and businesses in the Louisville area are still without power for the fourth day as crews continue to repair damage from the remnants of Hurricane Ike. At the peak after Sunday's windstorm, there were just over 300,000 customers without power. Jefferson County schools can canceled classes for the rest of the week. Meanwhile, Governor Steve Bashir was scheduled to meet with officials in western Kentucky about disaster relief efforts there. A candle mishap causes $50,000 worth of damage in northern Kentucky. The candle was being used for light after Sunday's windstorms knocked out power to hundreds of thousands of homes. Fire officials say the candle ignited the drapes, setting the house ablaze. It took 21 firefighters from three different districts to ex extinguish the blaze. The good news, no one was hurt. Taylor Elder now joins us with a first look at our forecast. Taylor? Well, right now, temperatures are looking very comfortable outside. We'll just take a look at our current temperatures. Right now in Louisville, we're sitting at 80 degrees. Up to our north in Indy, we're sitting at 78 degrees. Charleston, West Virginia is at 76 degrees. And below to our south in Nashville, we're sitting at 81 degrees. But as we take a look at our infrared cloud cover, as you can see, we have a cold front that's sitting off to our north, which doesn't affect us right now. Our high pressures in control of our, our weather for right now, bringing us high conditions as well as warm temperatures. As we take a look at tomorrow for our hike up the hill forecast, let's take a look at 8 a.m. We'll be no cloud in the sky, 66 degrees for noon. We'll be sitting at 75 degrees, mostly sunny conditions. And for 5 o'clock, we'll be sitting at 70, 77 degrees. I have more coming up in your five-day forecast.
Thanks, Taylor. Coming up on News Channel 12 Live at 6, we'll tell you why these German high school students spent a week here at Western. A high-rise rescue, boat versus boat, and a couple of people who made the Guinness Book for their size or lack thereof. We'll explain after the break. The odds of a child being in a Broadway show are 1 in 11,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism, 1 in 166. The odds say it's time to listen. To learn the signs of autism, visit autismspeaks.org. Here's something to think about. New research shows that regular exercise and a heart-healthy diet may help to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Thinking ahead now might make all the difference tomorrow. For more ways to maintain your brain, visit the Alzheimer's Association at ALZ.org. You're watching News Channel 12 Live at 6. Your source for late-breaking news affecting you. Storm Center 12 forecast the latest sports scores and highlights from your team, and consistently voted best newscast. News Channel 12, your source for news. If you thought you've heard German lately, well, you probably have. News Channel 12's Jason Hibbs joins us now to tell us why these students came from Berlin to Bowling Green. Well, Hank, normally when we think of foreign exchange students here at Western, we think of college students, but this group was for high school students. The trip was about experiencing American life. These students chose to come to Western to see what life at the American University is all about. Great experience because um, uh, our school is, uh, in comparison to, to WKU, it's so, so little. We just have one building and now we, we're on a campus and it's all huge for us and it's really impressive. The sentiment of German high school students who spent a week here in South Central Kentucky learning about the American way of life and studying the culture of the American University. It's an opportunity to see a campus and to come to a state like Kentucky, which um, you may not often see in your life, maybe not twice. Nine students in all on a practical field trip, if you will. They traveled across the Atlantic Ocean to mingle with other students here at Western. These visitors are extroverts. Zach Ahmed came to America because he's a people person. I wanted to meet new people, and I think America is a great country just to visit and it's a new experience I had to go through. During the middle of their week here at Western, the students gathered at Gatton Academy in Florence Snyder Hall to give American students a glimpse of life in Berlin. And now I would like to invite you to walk through my neighborhood and the walk will start at my house. WKU students who would like to learn more about Germany will get an opportunity to do so this May. Associate Professor of German Dr. Laura McGee will be taking a group of students. She took a group last year and says it was a great success. I was already working with the school in Charlottenburg that these students come from and the teachers said, hey, would your students like to stay with our students for a week of their time in Berlin? And I thought that, what a gift, yeah, what a fantastic opportunity. And I said, yes, let's do it. The students say studying abroad is an experience they'll never forget and will highly recommend it. Now, if you would like more information on the trip to Berlin this May, you can contact Dr. McGee at laura.mcgee at wku.edu. And to learn more about studying abroad, you can log online to wku.edu slash studyabroad. Dr. St. Jason, Bowling Green is joining Louisville and Lexington in a lawsuit against online travel agencies. After a brief closed session, city commissioners voted unanimously Tuesday night to join in the lawsuit arguing that companies like Travelocity and many others aren't paying the city a fair share of its 4% local tax on hotel rooms. The city's tax supports local tourism projects. The high cost of material and the decreasing tax revenues have caused the delay of some state road projects. Recent projects in Warren County were 7% over engineer estimates. Officials say gas consumption is down, which means fewer gas taxes to fund road work. They are also hoping for a possible grant money to continue the construction. 
Additional funds were just approved today to assist with all of the downtown building projects. Construction is also underway on the new minor league baseball stadium. Today, News Channel 12 Sports was able to get a full update on the team. As one Bowling Green Stadium finishes up construction, another begins. Starting on April 17, 2009, a new single-A minor league baseball team will begin play. GM and CEO Brad Taylor is excited about being in Bowling Green. Oh, I think this is going to be a dynamic market for minor league baseball. I mean, it's obviously a proven, fervent sports town. People are way behind Western. Sports is important, but I think entertainment's the other facet of what we're coming into town with, with our new baseball team. And, you know, hopefully we're going to fill a little niche between April and September. There's not a lot going on, you know, student athletic-wise over with Western because, you know, school's obviously out. So we feel like there's a great opportunity to bring minor league baseball to this town. Taylor is sure the stadium will be ready for opening day. Yeah, April 17th is opening night. We're throwing the first pitch. Uh, you know, I say that today, and I'm confident with it, and hopefully it doesn't come back to bite me later. <laughs> As for the name of this new team? Team name, we're working on that. Hopefully that's going to be unveiled uh, sometime around the uh, end of October. We obviously want to make sure when we come to market, it's more than just a name. We want to have a concept, a look, colors, you know, T-shirts and hats you can take home that day. People can wrap their hands around it that day and embrace the identity from the first minute they hear it. Kentucky crime victims will now have more information available to them. Governor Steve Beshear says Kentucky's victim notification program is being upgraded. Kentucky residents will have more information about sex offenders. The offenders' addresses will be mapped out on a website, and officials will be immediately notified when one is arrested. The state will be spending approximately $500,000 more a year to fund this program. And a Lexington man makes headlines, headlines for a number of times he's been in the slammer. Yesterday, Henry Earl appeared before a judge on an alcohol intoxication charge, a crime that he's now committed 1,000 times. To serve his sentence, the judge threw a curveball his way. Earl will be given 1,000 days to serve based on the high record he's set. On average, it only takes Earl two days before he ends up back behind bars again. And when it comes to professors and politics in the classroom, some students are concerned about the strong opinions teachers are presenting in class. What we need now is leadership that gets us With up. the presidential election year upon us, politics are on everyone's mind and are pretty much unavoidable. Every American that their deposit in a bank is safe. Some students are walking billboards for the party they support. You see Mr. Supporting the political logo there, Dave. And with posters and ads everywhere, some teachers find it hard to ignore. Uh, personally, I don't think it can really be avoided a lot of times, particularly depending on the major. Uh, my general sense is that uh, you, you don't want to force your opinion. Uh, I think you need to be somewhat open-minded. Can politics be debated without crossing the line? I don't think that teachers should express their views in class because we're all old enough to vote and we've all pretty much made up our decisions, so I don't think they're going to persuade us in any way. Some professors try to maintain balance in the classroom. I think part of your job is to play devil's advocate. Uh, for example, you could probably come up with a list of complaints against any politician that could be quite forceful. At the end of the day, students and faculty can be assured there will be many more political debates in and outside of the classroom. the White House coming to an end, students and faculty can expect things to stay controversial in the classroom. Preliminary enrollment figures for the fall semester at WKU show the school is creeping closer to the 20,000 student enrollment mark. According to Registrar Frida Eggleton, there are approximately 19,700 students on all campuses. She expects that number to drop slightly as some new students drop out and others are dropped by the school for non-payment of tuition. The makeup of the student population hasn't changed much either since last year. White students far outnumber the total of all minorities at slightly less than a 9 to 1 margin. Among minority groups, African Americans make up about 9.5% of all WKU students, while Hispanic and Asian students are each still hovering around the 1% mark. The remaining 6% are non-residents from foreign countries or didn't report their race or ethnicity. It's something that's not fun to talk about, but it happens to the best of us. It's the freshman 15. Jason Hibbs is in the studio to tell us how to avoid putting on extra pounds while in college. 
Well, it's not always 15. Sometimes it's 10, sometimes 20 or more. But it's common for people to gain weight during college. If you're in college and you want to stay healthy, listen up. Western students are known as hilltoppers, and the name comes naturally, considering the hike students take each morning to go to class. Freshman Martika Brooks says it takes some getting used to. She lives in Bemis Lawrence Hall and has classes on the other side of the hill. When I walked up, I said, Woof. I said, I gotta get used to walking up this, this hill every day. With a campus that's so inclined, many students may think that simply trekking up and down the hill every day is enough to keep fit. But registered dietitian Bonnie Holt says it takes more than that to stay in shape. A lot of times what I see recently with students is that they were an athlete in high school and they played different sports and when they come to college they're not doing that anymore. So you really want to think about, you know, beefing up that exercise if, to avoid gaining the weight. Or if you just want to maintain your weight, you need to continue doing the things that you were doing. And it's not just exercise that's important. But developing good eating habits are a must if you want to avoid gaining weight. In places like fresh food, resist the temptation for seconds. It's all about moderation. So you can eat the things you want. You can have the slice of pizza, but maybe you don't need three or four slices of pizza. <laughs> Not only that, but don't skip meals. Make sure you eat breakfast, the most important meal of the day. And on the other hand, avoid the fourth meal. Stop eating at least two hours before bed. And when you go to bed, get plenty of sleep at least seven hours, no more than nine. As mentioned before, eat healthy, smaller portions. And the last one is a biggie for college students. Avoid excessive alcohol, drink less beer and more water. Bonnie says that following these tips can not only help you stay in shape, but improve overall concentration and help avoid things like high blood pressure, high cholesterol and diabetes. And another thing you can do when eating in fresh food, the restaurant and catering group has added stickers on the glass in front of the food so you know what kind of food you're getting before it's put on your plate. Back to you guys. Power's back on for several residents in the state. After remnants of Hurricane Ike blew through the region, it left several without power. Officials in Louisville say that fewer than 350 customers' power have yet to be restored. This is just a fraction of the over 300,000 that were out. In hopes of becoming a star, News Channel 12's Jason Hibbs introduces us to one girl who the professionals say is on her way to the top. It was a big transition, though, uh, from small town girls. That's Carissa LaCour describing her move from rural Wyoming to Nashville, Tennessee. When she was 18, she knew she wanted to sing, but it wasn't until her junior year at the University of Wyoming that she, along with a friend, headed to Music City, USA. It was her friend's father who introduced her to the co-founder of the 70s supergroup, Bread, and Academy Award-winning songwriter, Rob Royer. Rob is now her producer and says Carissa stands out above the rest. She, uh, she writes, she, you know, she interprets, she's, you know, she can do a dance song, she can do a folk song, she can do a blues song, she can do an R&B song. And she does it with a phraseology and a way of kind of rolling the words out that I haven't heard on anybody else. It's just hers. And that's, the, to me, that's like, wow, that, that's, that's when you're really going to go all the way. Carissa says she appeals to audiences of all ages and doesn't really care that much about the business side of the industry. She just wants to sing. As long as I'm singing, I'm happy. <laughs> so. Rob says she'll continue to do just that. For News Channel 12, I'm Jason Hill. Well, Carissa has already released her first album titled Shades of Green. For more information about Carissa, you can log on to carissamusic.com. She was pretty good, Nick, huh? What do you think? Yeah, definitely. Good stuff. Uh, guys, WK Soccer this weekend. They're undefeated. They're still undefeated.
Bringing the best in public broadcasting to South Central Kentucky. Your local public broadcasting station, WKYU PBS Bowling Green. School is back in session, which means we are back here on the Extra Point. Lots of preps action to get to, and an athlete of the week you may never heard of. The Extra Point is next. Coming up toward the middle, coming across the timeline, giving it to Rogers. 38 footer to Buster. He made Yay! it! He made it! Up. He made it! Ty Rogers made it! Good evening and welcome back to another edition of the Extra Point. I am Nick Curran alongside Chris Beach. Chris, how was your summer? It was pretty good, Nick, but nothing like being back on the hill for another exciting year of sports. And we begin that year with what else? Hilltopper football. Unfortunately, it has not been a good start for Toppers football this season. After dropping the first two games to football bowl subdivision teams, WKU looked to claim victory Saturday against a football championship subdivision team, Central Arkansas. And the Tops appeared ready to take the field of Houchin Smith Stadium, but the Bears also coming in looking for their first win early in the game. WKU's Thomas Major with the big hit right there. Ooh, feel the pain. Led the top's defense with nine tackles, but UCA struck first. Leonard Caesar breaks free for a 51-yard touchdown in the second quarter. The Bears would go up 7-0 early. Later in the half, quarterback Robbie Park of the Bears finds Preston Echols for a six-yard scoring pass, 14-0 Bears. But WKU gets going. Brandon Smith keeps it and pounds his way. <laughs> Right into the end zone, four yard touchdown. We're 14 to seventh half, but the second half was all UCA as Brent Grimes rushes in for an 18 yard touchdown. The tops fall 28 to seven and are now 0 and three on the year. They gave up 407 total yards for the Bears. Just a horrible day for the defense. It's got to bring you closer together and you got to walk away from it. Uh, you can put it, every ounce of it on me and uh, let me take it and I can, trust me, I can handle it. I don't think the team is falling apart or anything like that. I think we'll stay together and you know, that's on the leadership of the team more than anything, you know, and us seniors, we're not gonna let anything like that happen. But, you know, at the same time, it's, I mean, guys are frustrated, you know, we wanna win. So the Tops start the season a disappointing 0-3. WKU continues to search for answers as the team hasn't won a game since September 20th. 2008. The WKU football team had high hopes when it kicked off the 2009 season in Knoxville. After holding the ball scoreless through the first quarter, an upset didn't seem out of the question. But any dreams were quickly dashed as the Vols hammered the top 63-7. After the game, head coach David Elson said the tops were simply outmanned. It's good that we got something on the board. I thought Bobby Rainey shows what an explosive back that he can be. Um, you know, and uh, you know, other than that, I, you know, we, we got dominated from the beginning of the second quarter to the end of the game. WKU headed home for a blackout of South Florida in week two. The team again gave a solid effort early, but fell 35-13 to the Bulls. Coach and players did see a lot of improvement. If we can improve as much from week two to three as we did, like we felt like we did from one to two, then um, you know we're, we're, we've got a team that's going to end up being really, really good. We made some improvements both offensively and defensively, but you know the goal was to win and win the game. So I imagine you know it's going to be a pretty you know uh, you know down feeling tomorrow and the rest of the night. Then there was Saturday. The Hilltoppers carried a 10 game losing streak into their contest against football championship subdivision, formerly one double A foe, Central Arkansas. The squad came out flat and the Bears bullied their way to a 28 seven victory. The loss stunned the Hilltopper program. I, I don't know, we'll, we'll go back and watch the film. I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, I mean, if I had to guess, I would say, you know, it's just a different guy on every play, you know, one, not one thing, you know, just uh, just the chemistry and, you know, trying to just get it clicking. I can't speak for the team. 
But as um, far as our mindset, we want to win just like everyone else wants to win. We just have to learn from our uh, mistakes, watch film, and try to get better for this next game. So Western Kentucky heads to Annapolis next week on an 11-game losing streak and without a win in over a year. And with Navy's unconventional offense nearly impossible to defend, the future doesn't look bright. That game at Navy kicks off Saturday afternoon at 2.30, and it will be televised on CBS College Sports. Chris, a lot of people around here really desperate for a win at this point. Oh, uh, yeah, and let me tell you something. Going into this game against Navy, this is a very proud program. They haven't been as strong and as nationally happy as they used to, but this is a very strong tradition they have in Annapolis. Now, they could not beat a football bowl subdivision team. This is a Navy team that upset, that almost upset Ohio State, Nick. What are they going to do in this game? It's going to be tough, a tough rushing attack for Navy, very unconventional. So obviously a lot of hardship for the WK football team on the field. Here to tell us what, what they're dealing with off the field, Jason Hibbs. Thanks, Nick and Chris. As if they didn't have enough to worry about already, now they're faced with an additional concern, the threat of swine flu. Today, the Extra Point learned that there are 102 cases of flu on WKU's campus, and that has coaches and athletes working hard to keep the flu off the field. The WKU football team has a tough road ahead of them this year, but now they have an additional concern, the health of their players. We've, we've had some battles with some guys that um, have had to miss practice because of, of not feeling well. Some of it's been common cold. Some of what it has been that? diagnosed as the flu. In fact, two players were removed from practice and told to avoid contact with the others. Talk of swine flu with linebacker Thomas Majors taking some extra precautions. Just try to uh, take care of myself as much as possible to do the right things to stay healthy. And I mean, hopefully I don't catch it. Majors believes the team is doing a good job at staying healthy by taking vitamins and staying physically fit. In fact, all football players are required to undergo intense physical training. But Director of Strength and Conditioning Jim Now says a place like this is a place where germs are likely to be spread. I'm always, uh, you know, talking with our athletes about, you know, don't put your hands around your nose, your mouth, uh, your eyes, wash your hands quite often. We, uh, you know, try to be very proactive in our approach to it. Uh, we, know we spray the equipment down with a uh, uh, germ-killing uh, solution to try to you know, cut down the spread of it. Thomas Major says that even if the others on the team do contract the illness, the game must go on. Yeah, it's a program. We're going to have to play ball. We got uh, games can't be canceled just because uh, a few people, a handful of people are sick. We have to go on with the show, so everyone's just going to have to step up and um, be ready for their time if they have to do it. No, Coach Jim now says that players are often sent home with hand sanitizer and Lysol. So guys, I've given you a gift. Use that hand sanitizer. We don't want any extra point people getting sick. Jason's Thanks, always Jason. Up for us. Yeah, we better uh, be safe right here, Nick. You never know. That swine flu, it's out there and it's right on you. But back to serious stuff. The tip off to basketball season is still a few months away. But Blue Ribbon Magazine already has high expectation for the Hilltoppers. The publication predicts the Tops to be the favorite to win the Sun Belt East Division. In Coach Kim McDonald's first year at the helm, Western went 15-3 to win the East Division for the sixth time in nine years. Blue Ribbon also selects senior A.J. Slaughter to be preseason player of the year. Slaughter led WKU in scoring last season at 16 points per game and earned Sun Belt second team honors. Gators football hit the road last Friday. We have the highlights and more next on the Extra Point. You, uh, my cell phone number and John's cell phone number. Hey, pretty. And um, number the restaurant where we're going to be. And oh, I've um, left you my pager number too, just in case, because you never know. Um, John, you have the gift. The odds of a babysitter calling 911: one in 1,400. So should happen, please don't hesitate. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism: one in 150. You know the odds of autism. Now learn the signs. Go to autismspeaks.org.
nutrition can lead to great things. Find out how a healthy lifestyle can help your child succeed. All over America, people are taking the national radon test. Have you? Have you heard of radon? Radon? Rad oh, radon. Is that a gas? Of course. I had it in my house. Is it something that comes up out the ground or something? Something dangerous that you're supposed to check on to make sure it's not in your home. True or false, radon is a radioactive gas. False. True. It's true? The Office of the Surgeon General recommends all homes be tested for radon. Uh, false. False. It's true. True. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer. True. False. True. True? I didn't know that. Homes with radon problems can be fixed. False. It's true. Wow. So what do you do about it? I'm going to dial the number and call. 1-800-SOS-RADON. I don't even know where to go to have it checked. I am going to call. I'm going to check into it. Yes, I'm worried. I'm seriously going to get that kit. If I don't take care of it, nobody else will. 1-800-SOS-RADON. You see, she's the brighter sister. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> Friday night in the fall means one thing, high school football. And there were big three battles on the gridiron in the area this weekend. First off, we go to our game of the week where the Bowling Green Purples hosted the Owensboro Red Devils. And what a battle this was. The visiting Devils would find the end zone first halfback, Aquato Douglas, cool first name, punches it in from three yards, seven to nothing, Owensboro. But Bowling Green responds as LaVance Anderson busts through the line for a two-yard touchdown. We're tied at seven. Second quarter, Owensboro's Douglas uses his speeds and turns on the Jets. 48-yard touchdown. Owensboro goes right back up, 14 to seven. But the Purples had answers all night long in a shotgun formation handoff. LaVance Anderson goes the distance. This is a 53-yard touchdown. He rushed for over 207 yards and had two touchdowns on the night. Bowling Green beats Owensboro 26 to 21 to stay undefeated. Bulls coach Kevin Wallace gave his insight on next games against Louisville Trinity. Get better. Um, I don't know who made the schedule. Um, I guess I get to look at him in the mirror every day, but uh, it'll be another great challenge when we go to Louisville next week. Greenwood traveled to Scottsville Friday night to battle the Allen County Patriots. The Gators would strike first in this one with a field goal, but in the second quarter, Brandon Boards broke tackles for 11 yards and the touchdown, 7-3, Allen County leads. Quarterback Ty Downing finds Nehemia Mkanta for about a 15-yard gain. A nice athletic catch and move here, but Greenwood would have to sell for a 33-yard field goal by Alex Bell. Pats would lead this one 7-6 at the half. In the second half, Allen County all defense. Cy Williams with the big defensive sack there. And then Greenwood's Nick Crawford fumbles the ball and Williams recovers it. Quarterback Corey Cooper for Allen County would make them pay as he airs one up here to Jacob Costello. What a catch for 11 yards. Allen County leads 15 to 12. But Cooper was a little too excited. He broke his leg during the celebration. Reminds you of Bill Gramatica of the Arizona Cardinals, doesn't it? But that would be the only bad thing for Allen County. They hang on to win. 15 to 12 is your final. Troy Halcombe and the Warren Central Dragons traveled to Warren East Friday night. Been a tough season for the Warren East Raiders so far. Things wouldn't get any different here. The Raiders having to punt it away. It will be fielded by Cortez Barber. And he does a little dancing. Scoots to the outside. Looking like Tiki Barber on this play. Except... He didn't fumble it, so Cortez will take it all the way in. 70 yards for the touchdown. Dragons way out in front. Then later, Jordan Shanklin, he plays for the Dragon basketball team, decided to play football this year. That is his first touchdown in a Dragon uniform. 66-yard scamper gets tackled a little bit late, but it still counts. Six points more for the Dragons. Then later, Troy Halcombe finds Eric Brown, 19 yards for the TD. The Raiders only conscientious objectors in this one. Dragons burn them 50 to 7. And from the gridiron to the girls, the Lady Gator volleyball team hosted the Greenwood Invitation over the weekend. Teams from around the state and one from Tennessee gathered at Greenwood for the event. The Lady Gators finished the weekend 4 and 3 with wins over Lexington, Paul Dunbar, Murray, and defending fourth region champion Logan County. Greenwood drop matches to Ravenwood, Tennessee, Lexington Catholic, and a rematch to Paul Dunbar. The Lady Gators are now 19-5 overall and look unstoppable in the fourth region with a dominant 7-0 record. 
Greenwood also took the soccer field this week. It was a battle for first place in the 8th district as the Gator boys team faced off with the Bowling Green Purples. This one was a defensive struggle as each goalie was spectacular. Bowling Green's Charles Carpenter and Greenwood's Patrick Conley made some incredible saves to preserve a zip-to-zip -zip tie. These teams will likely see each other again in the district tourney. And later, we caught up with Greenwood assistant boys soccer coach Dustin Downey to give us the input on the Gators' season. Pants. I am folding the pants. Oh, pants are long. <laughs> Do they go on my head? Do they? Do the pants go on my head? No. They go on Everyday head. moments can become teaching moments because learning starts long before school does. Give your child the start they need at bornlearning.org. Where have you been? I lost my cat. Oh, that's not right. It's yeah, so I made this cat it's rag right to try and get it back. Cool. Does it work? Kinda. Nice. Yeah, but that's not my cat. I gotta keep working on it. See ya. See ya. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Get started on your own inventions or just play some games at inventnow.org. Cat. I feel scared. Sometimes my parents have to take me to the hospital. I feel like a fish with no water. You know how to react to their asthma attacks. Here's how to prevent them. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. Impossible. When you open a book, you can explore new lands, meet new friends, and discover new adventures. There are amazing possibilities when you open your mind to reading. You can log on to the Library of Congress website and let the journey begin. Joined now by the assistant Greenwood Boys varsity soccer coach and head JV coach Dustin Downey. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, Dustin, you guys, as we saw earlier, coming off a big game against Bowling Green last Thursday night. Uh, just talk about kind of how big that game is. Uh, obviously, that's one of the biggest uh, rivals in the state uh, in boys soccer and probably within all sports is Bowling Green versus Greenwood. So um, throughout the week, I mean, we, we were really preparing to uh, do our best that we could against Bowling Green. Obviously, we, we want to win that game, but, you know, we'd uh, seen Bowling Green play earlier that season, and, you know, what we had seen, we tried to prepare ourselves for what we were up against, so. Finished in a nil-nil tie. Uh, always seems to be a low-scoring affair between you guys when you get together. Why do you think that uh, is? I don't know. That's the one thing uh, the head coach, Grau, was saying. Um, I'm not, you know, real familiar with this area, and, uh, soccer for the state. I'm from northern Kentucky, but, you know, we watched him play Owensboro, and it was just, when they play us, it's just a completely different team. I think both sides just, the adrenaline gets going, and, you know, the student section and the fans and everything just plays so much into a young athlete's high school lives. I mean, it's just different than any other games. Well, soccer, probably not the biggest sport exactly in south central Kentucky, but, you know, can you talk about the atmosphere when, when Bowling Green and Greenwood play, it draws a crowd. There was a lot of people out there. How much does that amp up uh, your team? Oh, man. Uh, home advantage, uh, we, we played at home. That's definitely key. And the night before, uh, at the girls game, uh, some of the coaches, and the, we were over there, and I think some of the students, you know, kind of got some little school spirit in behind them, and so they decided, you know, for the boys game to show up. But definitely, I mean, when you're on the field and you have people screaming your name and, you know, rooting for you, that's just so much, it gives you so much more energy on field to, uh, to do more things. Now you guys have had a pretty good season so far. You haven't been beaten in district or the region. Uh, how, how has that gone along? You guys haven't given up a goal in, in district play. Can you talk about Gerald's dominance a little bit? Um, I mean, obviously, if you can defensively never give up any goals, your team's always going to have a chance to advance. And so, um, you know, defensively, that's, that's great. That's what we're looking for. Um, offensively, you know, we can probably do a little better in, in the finishing end. but. 
you know, that's things we're working on for the postseason. We take one game at a time, and each practice try to get better. So. Speaking of that defense, Patrick Conley had a big game last yes. night in goal. Just talk about his play a little bit. What's he bring to you? To the uh, team? Pat, you know, he's a senior, and he's bringing this senior leadership as well. And it's very important um, from a goalie standpoint, especially to communicate well with your teammates. He can see the whole field and can see what other people can't, obviously being all the way back there. So his leadership skills and his communication skills and obviously his physical skills and goal uh, were, were huge the other night against Bowling Green. He played very well. Uh, going forward, you guys headed toward the district tournament. What's the key for you guys to win district? Uh, you know, just just one, focus one game at a time. Um, not not get ahead of ourselves and worry about our opponents and who we're playing next. We need to stay focused and concentrate um, because if you overlook teams, especially in district play for any sport, you know some teams uh, will jump up on you. And I believe that's what happened to them last year. Some team they beat highly in the season came up and ended up beating them badly here in the postseason, upsetting them. So take every team seriously. Well, Dustin Downey, assistant boys varsity soccer coach, head JV coach, and a fantastic dresser. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with us Thanks. here. And coming up on the extra point, Americo Cabadegli has our athlete of the week. <laughs> Dad, you want to get the phone? No. Every year, one million families face losing their homes to foreclosure. If you're ignoring your mortgage issues, things will only get worse. Call 1-888-995-HOPE, because nothing is worse than doing nothing. Explore new worlds. Read. Visit literacy.gov. It's never too early to start reading to your kids. There are amazing possibilities when you open a child's mind to reading. Explore new worlds. Read. You had the best medical care, but still your baby was born three months early. March of Dimes research helps save babies from prematurity. For information or to lend a hand, visit marchofdimes.com. Let's find the answers together. The athlete of the week may seem to many as just another face in the crowd. That's because he is in every crowd. In the extra points, America Capodagli has more. Fleet. Is it a person who comes to the school just to play? Or is it one who comes to the school to better themselves <laughs> and the university? I know it's really corny. I know a lot of people say it, but it is student athlete. And a lot of times, everyone, uh, some of the sports get really bad raps because half the time they're thinking it's athlete. Student. Junior Curry Martin is on the tennis team, but boy, does he do so much more. Uh, right now, I'm an, I'm an associate with Lambda Chi Alpha. I'm on, uh, I'm the student affairs committee chair uh, and student senator for our student government association. And I'm also the team representative, uh, along with another teammate of mine, uh, Andrew Swanson, for SAAC, which is Student Athlete Advisory Council. Even from his first day on campus, Curry wanted to improve the place, so he joined SGA. Student affairs. Uh, basically, it's one of those committees that if, if any of the students really have a problem with anything on campus, they need they come to me, come to the Senate, 
talk to it about it, we'll address it in our committee. We can write legislation and, and uh, uh, correct any problems that any students have on campus. The desire to help WKU may come from some old family ties to the Hill. I actually had some family from around the area. Um, my grandmother grew up a little for a little while here in Bowling Green. Uh, in fact, her great uncle uh, was who they named Rhodes Dorm after, and after John B. Rhodes. And then his daughter, Mary Rhodes, um, was uh, married a, a big time donor to Western. His sister is Margie Helm <laughs> Library. So I had some family um, family influence from around here. So what does he say would have to be his best attribute? I would have to say my swagger. <laughs> that was. <laughs> For the extra point, I'm America Capadagli. His swag is his best attribute. It's what we said about you, Chris. Swagger. <laughs> it's the first day of fall. Beautiful day. Melanie Neiman joins us for a look at this week's weather. A lot of football games coming up this weekend. Melanie. Uh, that's right, Nick. It is the first day of fall. I have to wish everyone, everyone a great first. I have to wish everyone a great first day of fall, even though it didn't really feel much like fall out there today. We're sitting right now at 82 degrees at the Bowling Green Airport, and um, we. D uh, d uh, got a break from that rain that we've been experiencing for the past couple of days. Take a look at your high today. 82 degrees, low of 65 degrees, which is above your normals for this time of the year. But the big, the big, um, excuse me, the big story here is precipitation, 0 0.01 for the day. But look at this, 3.92 inches for the month of September this far. And I hate to say it, folks, it's just going to keep, uh, that number is just going to keep increasing in the upcoming days. A look at your temperatures across the Commonwealth right now. We're sitting in the upper 70s to lower 80s. And all the warm temperatures we've been experiencing lately are due to the warm, moist air that's going, uh, that's coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. And as I just mentioned, that air is moist. It's been causing us all of the rain that we've been seeing for the past couple of days. Look at your forecast region. We see all of the greens and yellows and reds, and that is not good news, folks. We have a low pressure system seated just over Mississippi right now. It's going to be making its way towards us, hitting us and giving us um, some more chances of rain for the rest of your work week and into your weekend. Now, what does this mean for you football fans? We have Warren Central. We have Warren East and Greenwood all playing their home games in Bowling Green this Friday. And I'm sorry to say this, folks, it's not looking very pretty. We have a 50% chance of thunderstorms with your lows dropping down to the lower 60s. Now, what about you Purples fans heading up north to Louisville to watch them take on Trinity this Friday? It's not looking much better for you guys. 40% chance of thunderstorms with your lows sticking in the mid-60s. Now we do have a kickoff forecast for Annapolis, Maryland as WKU heads up north to take on Navy this Saturday. We have kickoff time set for 2.30, that's central time, 3.30 eastern time. Your temperatures are going to be 72 degrees, and I'm sorry to say it, they do have a 30% chance of rain up there as well. Just not a good week for sports fans. Now we, let's take a quick look at your next five days here. You see on your screen we have rain, rain, rain. It just won't go away. We have temperatures all the way up there in the lower 80s. That's feeling more like summer than it is fall. But we do have a low pressure system heading, um, excuse me, we have a cold front heading our way. It's going to be hitting us around Sunday, and it's going to be dropping our temperatures down and drying out our air, hopefully giving us some great weather for the WKU women and soccer game Sunday afternoon. Thank you very much, Melanie. Football looking pretty good, or not that good, a little rain, soccer looking not pretty good. Not this weekend, no. <laughs> Apologize for some technical difficulties with weather, but Melanie, go for a rebound, got boxed out on that one, I think, so that's what happens. But Chris, big weekend of high school football. Oh, is it ever. Bowling Green versus Louisville Trinity, that's going to be a big matchup between two of the best in the state. I can't wait for that one. And Fort Campbell coming into Warren Central, the two-time defending 2-8. Two state champion a war gonna take place at dragon stadium we lucked out on the rain last week you know what melanie i think we'll i think we'll take our chances this week too and be sure to desanitize people the swine flu is out there it's lurking for you take it seriously it is we're gonna get some more right after we go off the air <laughs> that's going to do it for this week's edition of the extra point 
as we talked about, an important week for the uh, area schools. We'll have a full coverage of it for you next week right here on The Extra Point. For Nick Curran, I am Chris Beach. You have a good night.